All right, everyone, and welcome to the fourth session of The Avenger. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of announcements other than, uh, if you haven't heard already, uh, this coming Friday, uh, I will be hosting, as in, like, on my channel, not actually running, uh, I will be hosting the Kairos game as run by GM Josh. Uh, if you're interested in that, it's a 29th century campaign that focuses on uh, the temporal agent equivalent of SEAL Team 6. And more or less, uh, GM Josh runs a very good game, and I have the privilege of uh, streaming it for all of you. Uh, so that's going to be Friday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, so 7 p.m. if you're in Greenwich. Uh, other than that, uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, as you may or may not realize, uh, the captain is not with us today. So we will have uh, Mr. Rollins in charge today. Unless, of course, the doctor declares him medically unfit, but, you know, we'll get into that if it comes up. Uh, in any event, I believe today's opening log is with the doctor. That it is. Personal log, April 5th, 2162. Upon figuring out that Petty Officer Jensen is part of a species called the Dowd, I did research into what these people could possibly be. Unfortunately, Starfleet has no records of the Dowd, so we're going into this completely blind as to what they're capable of. Through some very careful testing, we've established that she can reshape reality on a, eh, <clears throat> on a subconscious level during sleep. A very dangerous ability indeed. She's expressed some of her fears to me during our conversations over Rise and Nail, and they're completely valid. What if she dreams about the Avenger exploding and she ends up killing us all, or... What if she dreams of a planet caving in on itself, killing the residents on it? To try and help counteract these dreams, I've given her a medicine capable of keeping her awake, but... Truth be told, I only think it's working because I told her it would. In addition to the medication, we're currently en route to Vulcan to see if any help can be evaded to Jensen through... Training her mind to give her some sort of control over her powers. Whether or not that's possible, even I don't know. I find the Kulinar, the Vulcan ceremony to purge themselves of emotions, to be, well, to quote the Vulcans themselves, illogical. Emotions are a core part of any personal growth, and to purge one of their emotions is to rob them a part of that journey. Personal biases aside, when the inevitable comes, and we have a conversation about keeping Jensen on the Avenger, I will do my best to defend keeping her here. Even if she is a godlike being, she's part of our family now. And I'll do my damnedest to make sure she stays with us. Russell, my first scar is from a damn scalpel. If only you could see me now. End log. Alrighty. So, uh, at this point, I did have at least one scene to handle before you guys arrived at Vulcan. So, in engineering... Uh, obviously, Jensen is not there, unless she has been cleared for duty. Uh, but who is there uh, is Mr. Anderson and Helix and Moose. And uh, Moose, I would say that the shift has been eerily quiet. As in, nothing's gone wrong. And this is the longest period of time that nothing has happened. And it's starting to get a little weird, because you're almost expectant that you know the next moment something's gonna go wrong but you know it just keeps going and going uh this is just gonna be writing little diagnostics here and there he's gonna walk up to mr anderson like how's the deck plating holding up too well sir that's Good. Is it? And, uh, well, it means something's working finally. Um, Pandorian Shield Array, that's holding up fine. Looks good, sir. Vulcan Tractor Beam. Looks good, sir. New phasers. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Sonic Screwdriver. <laughs> oh, sonic Showers. It's all good, sir. As you'll see in my report. Okay. You do read the report, sir, right? I do. I do. 
Alright, well then. What, you got another hour or so before shift ends? You just look at Mr. Anderson, like, you got another hour? Uh, I believe so, sir. You can go early. I, I can cover what's left. Okay. Uh, Helix. She just kind of looks over from where she's standing. Yes. Did you get your code out of Betty yet? I did what I could, yes. Uh, I may say you seem a little agitated. Mm. Fidgety. You know what? I'm going to try something. And uh, Boost is going to go over to one of the panels and pull up Betty's program. Mm -hmm. And he's going to integrate some access of engineering uh, controls to Betty. Okay. Routine stuff, like level 5 diagnostic checks. Okay. He just wants Betty to have a look at it. All right, roll me a control engineering, and the Avenger will assist with a computers and engineering uh, the difficulty here will be a two. And I'm using a computer, right, for programming and stuff? Yep. So my computer expertise kicks in, which I believe is an extra dice. All right. And experimental computer technology? Yeah. As a focus? Excellent. Ooh. Very nice. That's four successes and, already. Uh, we just and the role for the ship was what? Oh, somebody might have gotten it. No. Got it. All right. Cool. So you guys start off with three momentum. And yeah, uh, you create a link uh, between the two systems, and Betty runs a level 5 diagnostic. Nothing's wrong. Everything is uh, ship shape. You're just watching Betty accept the information, see how she processes it. Oh, well, she's doing good. Helix, you didn't try and download any programs to Betty, have you? I did fix several errors in the code that were, quite frankly, biological mistakes. Okay, but anything called URA? There have been 57 attempts to install a program called URA. Betty's denied them all. Nothing that I'm aware of. I could okay. look into it if you'd like. No, we don't want the captain yelling at me or you. Yeah, I'll I'll look into it later. Uh, Betty seems to be good. What are you doing, Helix? What are you having planned? I mean, last I checked, I was told by the captain I had to follow <laughs> you around, and whenever you're not on duty, I sit in a cargo bay. So, that's fun. He's just gonna hit a, the calm button. I was like, uh, Ensign, wait, who's, who's in next? What's the next duty crew? He's going to look at the roster for a second to look at uh, whoever's supposed to be relieving him. Mm -hmm. He uh, just, like, yeah, you're in early, I will relieve you early. He's going to bounce early. <laughs> okay. Helix, come with me. All right, where are we going? Uh, one of the uh, sparring rooms we have here for fitness and maintaining physicality. She does that kind of twitch of her head that indicates that uh, she's confused, and she says, very well, I fail to see the purpose of this exercise, but uh, I will do as you ask. Yeah, it keeps you out of the cargo bay for a while. Fair. Alright, so... Uh, it's going to be Moose is there. And let's see, where did I put her token? There she is. And Helix is there. All right, so the workout room is uh, about the same size uh, back on your Nova class. If you guys remember the, uh, the, the what was it, the lounge down on deck seven. And it, it's just very small. It can maybe fit about 10 people max. And there's all manner of chairs, there's a replicator or two, uh, but for most part it's your standard Star Trek lounge of the era. Yeah, and um, yeah, he'll just have her look at the equipment, and he'll uh, 
hop on a treadmill and start and go for a run. All right. And just, you know, if you want to go away from that there, it's basically just giving her something to do besides the same uh, cargo bay all day. <laughs> all right. So, you know, Helix looks over some stuff, uh, kind of stares at you for a little bit, and eventually says, I find it interesting that you biologicals need to maintain your form. Would it not be better to, shall we say, use more mechanical... Oh, no, of course. Biologicals have that bias against anything mechanical. Yeah, I don't know about that. And he'll hop off the treadmill and lift up his pad leg like, I got a kind of a mechanical component sticking out here. I'm fine with it. Yes, but can you feel through it? In some ways, yes. The vibrations of the deck plate and how it vibrates up the whole entire prosthesis into the what's left of my leg, I can tell how fast we're going, how the ship's doing, and how the gravity is supposed to be working. But you do not actually feel the limb. Not in a typical sense for a biological being, but I've adapted to the new method. Hmm. Well... No, never mind. It's something I'm sure your doctor would uh, not approve of. If you're thinking about giving me a new leg, I don't want it. This is a cost of pride, and I'd rather remember it. Oh no, I was simply going to offer to take that crude piece of technology and upgrade it. Frankly, I find it aesthetically displeasing. Well, I find it suits my needs. But, uh, if I ever get the inclination to seek your prosthesis, uh, prosthesis advice, I'll make sure to, you know, approach you for it. But, while we're here, do you have questions? You've been in a cargo bay for a while. I have about as many questions as any biological, if not more. Problem is, is that... There's not really a whole lot for me to do. I perceive time almost to an attosecond, which, even this conversation, it feels excruciatingly long, even if you and everyone else uh, do not think it is such. I have already formulated responses to over 20,000 possible conversation topics, and yet... In the time it takes me to say all this, I have constructed another 20,000. Well, how about this? You take that subroutine, that program, and you turn it off. Make every interaction completely random. Let it be a surprise to you as it is to someone else. And disable your monitoring of time in such a precise manner. Go by the second, go by the minute. I'd say do that. I think you might enjoy your surroundings a little more. Hmm. I will consider this option. And it is about that time that uh, the captain uh, kind of gives an all-hands broadcast to notify you that you have all arrived at Vulcan. And if you look out of the, uh, the window uh, on anywhere on the ship, you would see the lovely planet in the background. It's a, for those who don't know what Vulcan looks like, it's sort of a desert world. Uh, it's a very brown planet. Uh, with some blue, bluish green sort of sparse throughout. And the captain has said that uh, he is leaving Lieutenant Rollins in charge until he returns from a debriefing. Uh, other than that, uh, the crew is free for shore leave as long as they are back within 36 hours. Well, Moose is uh, definitely gotta go. And, uh, Enjoy some shore leave. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and ask what uh, what everyone's up to. So uh, for Liza, um, you obviously have you know been talking about Jensen and how to deal with her. Um, would you prefer to handle that conversation now or later? Um, I'll have like a semi-important conversation with her now and then i guess like if that meeting comes that we have all the senior staff talk about what we should do with jensen mm -hmm. uh 
I would want her in on that if we have the opportunity to bring her in. Okay, so let's say uh, you're having a conversation with uh, Jensen and Sickbay. Yeah. And uh, we'll say that the conversation starts more or less along the lines of, so, Doc, what are they... What are they going to do exactly? Like, I know we, we're going to get someone from Vulcan who's an expert in mental training, but I I guess I'm just worried. What what does that entail exactly? Oh, to be quite frank, my knowledge of the Vulcan's sense of that is minimal. But the one thing I do know about is, um, you know about the Colonar at all? Petty officer. No, I can't say I do. Um, it's the Vulcan ceremony in which they are hurt of their emotions since they find that their emotions get in the way of things. Hopefully, so, if uh, they suggest doing that to you, um, I'm doing my damnedest to make sure that doesn't happen. I mean, it, it sounds awful, but at the same time, maybe it's only a Vulcan thing? Oh, I sure hope it's not. I yeah, maybe I sure hope it is. My bad. Well, uh, I suppose, and she's cut off mid sentence as you get a page, uh, and one of the uh, one of the staff on the bridge says, uh, "This is bridge to Master Chief for Liza." Go ahead, bridge. We have a Vulcan delegate, well, a Vulcan neurospecialist who's requesting to come aboard. Um, sure, go ahead, beam him aboard and have him meet me in sickbay. Very good, sir. And after about maybe uh, ten minutes, uh, you know, you you guys are in sickbay waiting, uh, when a when the door opens and a security officer leads in a Vulcan gentleman... Uh, he is about 5'10". Uh, he has the stereotypical bowl haircut of a Vulcan. Uh, he is currently clad in a Vulcan Science Academy uh, ensemble, which is more or less a blue jumpsuit that is different from the one you're wearing. Uh, think to Paul, uh, what to Paul wore, uh, except obviously not as uh, tight, maybe a little bit more loose. Uh, right. But the, uh, the Vulcan gentleman walks in, he takes a look around, and his eyes settle on you, Master Chief, and he says, You must be the doctor. I am Delkov. Who is my patient? Ah, uh, uh, Delkov. I am Master Chief for Liza, and, uh, well, this woman here is the one you'd be looking at. So Delkov just slowly turns to look at Jensen kind of looks her up and down and says, hmm, very well, what can you tell me about her condition? Um, well, from what we're able to tell, her mental capacity is high above what a human should be. Um, seems that her nightmares have ways of altering reality. And as far as we know, we she's part of, well, half of an unknown species called the Dowd. You know, I did research myself and nothing could be found. The, uh, his left eyebrow raises in that Spock-like way and he just kind of continues to stare at Jensen. I see, and what have you done to counteract these effects? Well, so far, the things we've tried is, uh, at the very least, keeping her off duty to minimize her stress and medication to keep her awake, since it seems that these destructive capabilities only happen in her sleep. Mm. Very well. I will require access to the patient. I will also need to see every bit of scan data you've acquired at this point. And then, for the first time, he actually addresses Jensen as if she's in the room and says, Miss Jensen, I would like you to come with me to your quarters in one hour's time. We will begin a Vulcan exercise to help focus and center your mind. And 
Jensen looks a little bit confused and a little bit weirded out and says, uh, of course, Delkov. And she kind of looks to you for guidance, uh, Master Chief. That seems like it could be well in order, Delkov. However, I would request that my presence is there in her quarters. Delkov sort of shrugs in that Vulcan way and says, that is your prerogative as chief medical officer of this vessel. Very good. Um, just in case, can I, can I try to like insight check him in a way to see like, obviously Vulcans are hard to read, mm -hmm. but I just trying to see if there's any sort of malicious intent behind what he wants to do, even though they are here to help. I would say this would be an insight and con, and okay. the difficulty here would be a two, because he's a Vulcan, and as you said, is hard to read. Okay. I'll take a moment um, for third dice. Alright. Um, counseling as a focus, because of reading emotional state, or... Sure, I'll let that happen. Alright. Insight, con... Yeah. He's just hard to get a read on. Uh, you're not really used to dealing with uh, uptight Vulcans because we don't really have anyone on the senior staff. So um, I think your only interaction with Vulcans has been uh, on your off-duty time. Uh, so yeah, you just aren't getting anything useful out of Delkov. Alrighty. Yeah, and then we'll just follow his suggestions. But on that, yeah, he seems fine. <clears throat> All right. So uh, next up, we're going to check in with Mr. Morris. Uh, so what is Morris going to be up to uh, for this 36 hour window? Um, I don't think he knows yet, but right now, um, I think he's just going to wait in his quarters um, for Jensen to get back. Okay. Uh, what about you, Mr. Rollins? What are you doing? I will strictly be on the bridge and, like, micromanaging to, you know, like, I've been put in charge. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm just trying to be, trying to make sure everything is in perfect order when the captain gets back. Okay. And before we get to Morris again, uh, Moose, where are you going for shore leave exactly? Uh, well, first I'm dropping off a pad with uh, the quartermaster with a bunch of little things on there, which we'll cover later, maybe. Uh, then he's going to his quarters and he's changing outfits, so a more relaxed civilian wear. Uh, shorts, shirt, and he's going to head to sick bay just for any booster shots for going down to Vulcan. All right. So uh, we'll put Delkov off the map, but uh, yeah, Moose, you walk on in, and you see that Jensen is still in sick bay. Jensen, Moose, just gives her a smile and a nod. Everything good? Uh, aside from the fact that I'm sort of stuck here at the moment, uh, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, that's good to hear. Oh, an old saying, keep your stick on the ice, okay? We're all in this together. She looks at you quizzically. Is, is that a hockey reference? Yeah, it means to keep your cool. Don't get angry, because we're all in it together. Of course, sir. She just looks confused in general. He just smiles more. He's like, hey, Doc. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, I need you to, to stick me with something just like that scalpel stuck you. Uh, I'm heading down to plant side, looking for uh, any antibiotic boosters. Of course, uh, just let me find those really quick. Um, uh, he kind of, you know, scrambles a bit. Ah, here we are. And he'll go ahead and inject them. Mm hmm. Thank you, Doc. Jensen. How's... Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
What's up, Doc? Uh, how's the prosthetic leg treating you? Yeah, I know they said to expect uh, some more shrinkage with the limb, uh, but I haven't had to add any more socks to it yet. But uh, it's been doing good. Good. If uh, anything with that limb seems to be bothering you, you come right to me and I'll see what see what I can do for you. Will do. I know the uh, dangers of letting it get infected, so I keep an eye on it at all times. Ever the vigilant one, Moose. Try to be. <laughs> Have a good day. And you as well. You'll just nod to both of them and head on out. Alright. Out of curiosity, would you be taking a shuttle pod down, or would you be transporting? Oh, he'll transport. Okay. So on your way to the transporter room, uh, up on the bridge, uh, Rollins, you are getting a hail from the Vulcan Science Academy. Uh, hello? All right. So, uh, you put it up on screen, and you see a uh, another Vulcan male, and this one looks a little bit more advanced in age. Uh, he definitely has gray in his hair. And he says, I am head researcher Savek of the Vulcan Science Academy. I see that Captain Voss is not among you. Who do I have the pleasure of addressing? This is Lieutenant Rollins, uh, current in charge. Very well. Mr. Rollins, we have a request to make of the Avenger. Okay. Have you spoken to Starfleet about this? We have need of a fast response from Starfleet, yes. Okay. The VSA Piak, a science vessel of ours, is reporting that they have engine trouble approximately one light year distant. I would ask that you provide whatever assistance you may as you are not only the fastest ship in the area but are more well equipped to deal with a engine problem than any of our ships would very well uh yeah if you want to send over the relevant information assisting a ship in need is something we do and he sends up the data. So uh, Moose is head of the transporter. He has like the typical sun lotion on the nose and shades on. <laughs> so would uh, page for Moose, Lieutenant Moose. Uh, oh yes, Rollins. What's it? What is it? Uh, we just received a request for aid to one of the Vulcan Science Academy ships. Seems they're having engine problems, and uh, are you available? Always, sir. Okay. Uh, we're going to be heading out that way, and uh, yeah, if you and your team can be ready. With the relevant data that they sent over to us, I guess mm -hmm. uh, whoever's on the con Calm, calm. Yeah. Uh, punch it in. How, how long will it take us to get there? Well, uh, if Mr. Morris, oh well, I guess Morris, would you still be in your quarters at this point, or would you have come back up to the bridge? Uh, do I know to come back to the bridge? I I think he was just waiting. I haven't paged him or anything yet. Okay, so maybe Morris isn't there. Uh, in that case, uh, the only officers on the bridge are Staros and Shatoli. So either one of them can do an insight con uh, at a difficulty of zero just to see how much momentum you guys get. Uh, oh, yeah. I have an insight of I have a combined score of insight and con is 10. <laughs> oh, I mean, so mine's 11. I mean, I could also just punch it up. Yeah, I was going to say, Morris you want to do it yourself. Hmm. Morris could probably do this without the computer. He is the navigator. Well, but Morris isn't here. I mean, you he's could just, fix that. He's just off duty, yeah. Just right. call no. the bridge. Well, I could, but I mean, like, would I? If he's off duty, we have... Oh, that's your call. Yeah, that is your call as commanding officer. I'll just do it. 
part of that micromanagement. <laughs> okay. So, Morris, uh, you get the call to come back up to the bridge that uh, you might be needed. I'll be right there. All right. And, yeah, you arrive in short order, and uh, you look at the coordinates, and if you could roll me an insight con, and if you've got astro navigation, uh, star charting, anything of that nature, you have a focus. Astro navigation is my first one. Very good. Uh, difficulty zero, you said? Uh-huh. All right. All right, so you get a momentum. Uh, this will take you maybe about an hour of travel, if that, at warp four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, if it's that, if it's that, is that our max warp speed? Uh, no, your max warp is uh, warp five point five. Okay. Um, we could get there an hour at at, at um standard cruising speeds, but we can probably push the engine if we need to get there quicker. Captain, I don't think so at this time. I mean, they didn't. They didn't express. Oh no, they did express a little bit of urgency, didn't they? By requiring us. Yeah, let's punch it. Aye, sir. All right. So, uh, I think the head math, and I'll check this on the side, but I'm pretty sure that Enterprise used the TOS scale, which I could be wrong about. Uh, but let's see how long that would take. I believe they did use the TOS scale. Let's see. Let's go by hours. Hmm. Apparently it's closer than I thought it was. Because it's saying that uh, it takes 70 hours to get one light year, which doesn't seem quite right. Uh, either way, you know, if you punch it, you'll get there in maybe about 30, 40 minutes. Um, so you put a halt on shore leave. You get everyone back to the ship that can. Uh, Voss is unfortunately unreachable, so you will be without the captain's guidance on this one. But uh, with everything and everyone where they should be, uh, Morris, you angle the ship away from Vulcan and jump her to warp. And uh, during the transit time, unless anyone has any scenes, uh, we're just going to skip ahead. Uh, you arrive in short order uh, in a sort of a void between the stars. And waiting for you there is the Vulcan science vessel, uh, Piak. Now, the Piak is your typical... Um, I guess I'll put us on this map, just so you can see what it kind of looks like. So for those who don't know what a uh, Vulcan science vessel looks like, it's a sort of a tapered uh, triangular prism, if I had to try and qualify it. Uh, except for the latter back half is circular in nature, and has a series of rings that support a secondary hull. And the ring is where the uh, engine block is. And you're able to see on the view screen that the upper part of the ring is leaking drive plasma. Well, that can't be good. Uh, I let Moose know that we've arrived. And hail All right. the VSA block. So you, uh, you open a hail. And uh, you're not getting a response. Can we do some scans to see what might be going on? You certainly may. So if someone wants to handle Shatoli, uh, well, I guess also, Morris, you could do this as well. Uh, yeah. So either, either one of you, I'd like you to roll me a reason. Well, let me ask you this. Are you looking to get a state of the vessel, a state of the vessel's crew, or are you trying to do something else entirely? Um, I'm gonna look. Hmm. I'm gonna look at the the ship first to see if life support's on, and then I'll maybe spend some momentum to ask other questions. Okay. Uh, in this case, I would like you to roll me a reason engineering because you are looking at the ship, and the ship will assist you with a sensors engineering. Alright, I will buy... What's the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty here is a 1. Alright, I'll buy one die with momentum. Alright. 
Uh, I guess while we're at this, is this technically a scene change? Not yet, no. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Oh, boy. I can re-roll that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine, guys. But uh, let's get the ship in here as oh, well. Yeah. Look at the ship. And sensors engineering for the mm -hmm. ship? All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, let me re-roll that. Um, I could use my determination here. Uh, I don't think I have a value. So yeah, I'll just use my technical expertise to re-roll the complication. All right, so you get that momentum right back. Uh, you do detect that life support is operational. However, I am going to spend a total of three threat as, uh, you know, as you guys are sitting there scanning and uh, more as you're looking at the readouts, uh, you notice that panels on either side of the ring uh, have opened up and that what looks to be particle cannons have come out of the vessel and it opens fire. So unfortunately, you guys are not with your shields up at the moment, which means that if this hits and does any damage, you're taking breaches. But let's roll and see what happens. Uh, I will also say that I'm spending a, a couple threat to roll a third die for the uh, Piak. Wow. Oh. Wow. So good news, uh, it misses. Uh, but sort of a, a point of order, as far as anyone knows, Vulcan Science Academy vessels don't have weapons at all. Uh, oh, but we are going to drop into actual turn order at this point. Uh, did we get a chance to get the readouts from the sensor? Uh, I would say that all you were able to tell is that life support was operational and that every uh, everything aside the engines was ship shape. But that's the extent of what you got before this ship fired at you. Um, can I spend the, 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 the free momentum I get to ask a second question? You certainly may. Um, knowing that the Romulan War had a lot of, or they had those, the holographic drone ship, right? Mm -hmm. Is that just the one, or do they have a lot of those? Uh, I would say this isn't going to take your momentum, but you would know that it's happened more than once. I'm looking for evidence that... Anything that might indicate that this isn't a typical, other than the, is this, am I showing other signs that this is not a Vulcan vessel? No, and that might be the strange thing, is that everything your sensors are seeing, aside from the cannons, uh, they should be a standard Vulcan Science Academy vessel. Okay. Okay. But yeah, uh, I will say we're now in turn order, so it's whichever one of you on the Avenger would care to go. Um, I say first thing we do is raise shields. Yeah, what do we need to do? I mean, do we just pop red alert, or...? You just say that you're raising shields as a minor action. Okay, yeah, raising shields. Alright. Mm. Well, yeah. Um, also, untapped potential on Morris? Is that a thing? Yes! Yes, it is. Sorry, thank you oh, for yeah. reminding me. Yeah. Ooh, boy. Right. That's well, one, for us, one for us. Yeah, that's one for us, one for him. Nice. Great. <laughs> Alright, so what are you guys doing? Are we... We're... I can take evasive maneuvers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, let's let's do that. Let's do the evasive maneuvers and try to take out their weapons combo again. All right, that's what difficulty two or one. Uh, it is a daring con with a difficulty of one, assisted by the ship's structure and con. All right, I'll spend one momentum, please. All right, alrighty. And also note, this does have a power requirement of one. Alright, I'll roll for the Avenger. 
All right, that's a complication. Oh, boy. All right, so you do get three momentum. Uh, you could buy off that complication with two of that momentum. That sounds good. Yeah, Yeah. so we'll go down to four. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so uh, um, go ahead. Well, I can... Um... My, my character is kind of built up on taking two actions a turn. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could switch over into a scan for weakness task um, for two momentum, and it does not become more difficult. Okay. So it's not going to become more difficult because you are doing it yourself. It becomes more difficult because you are at medium range. That's fine. But it, it's, it's, I don't get the penalty for taking a second action. Okay. With, the, with whatever that, threat, that momentum spend is called. Okay. Uh, it's a swift task, is what you're... Uh, what you're ah, thinking. yes. Yeah. All, right. Uh, be... All right. So, so... Scan for Weakness is a control science, a difficulty of two, because you're at medium range, and the ship will assist you with a sensor security. All right, I'm going to spend one momentum. Okay. Very nice. Let's see what the ship gets you. I will re-roll the ship's die. Okay. Uh, if you want to re-roll, that's oh, cool. Yep. Alright, let's see. Sensor security. And for flavor purposes, I'm looking for a weakness that is not the uh, engines. Noted. Uh, how much momentum do we get from that? That's what Four? We don't have it yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, but uh, right now I, I've got three bonus momentum. Um, we're, but we might get it. And okay. I need to do untapped potential. Oh, Ooh, right, that's job, five. Sure. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're, um, uh, you're capped on momentum. Um, Can I use the one floating and one new created advantage here? Sure, what's the advantage? I want it, us to be able to use target system without the increased difficulty. I will say that your next attack made may have the benefit of fast targeting systems, meaning you can select any structure, or any department and target it specifically for free. That's the idea. Awesome. All right. Or, or we could do what we did last time to the... Because you're doing evasive and I'm firing and we're in sync, we don't get the negative. I think it's going to work. Out the, I think it's going to work out the same, but this lets this helps us not blow up their ship. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. So I was the you spending two momentum to do the extra action. Are we still able to we use are, my quick already, action? Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can use quick to action because it is not a swift task, and you could go yes. Okay, yeah, if I can and uh, target the weapons. Okay, you can target the weapons for free, so there is no difficulty increase. However, what are you attacking with? Is the question. I I believe because we're medium, it's phase cannons. Okay, mm -hmm. phase cannons are close range. We probably want what the oh, hmm. Yeah, you are designed to be nasty at close combat, but otherwise your only medium option is the uh, warheads. Torpedoes, yeah. I'd recommend spatial here, just because we don't want to... Nuclear? What? <laughs> uh, I mean, we are here as a rescue team. <laughs> they fired at us. Screw them. Well, I mean... I, I, I agree with the spatial torpedoes, but you're the, you're the commanding officer. No, if, no, if we can trouble, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I thought I thought the phase cannons because our when they weren't working, they were short range only or close range. But when they were fixed, I thought they were medium. Range. Mm -mm. They have always we can, been close. It may have just been we were limited to close before when the with the diff the whatever, but uh, they're just best at close. Right. I mean, you can yeah. still fire them at medium, but it's an increased difficulty. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. I think it would still uh, be this. It'd be the same difficulty as the phasers, though, or the 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 torpedoes. torpedoes. Yeah, 
Yeah. It, it would be a difficulty three. And just to double check, does Morris have the uh, con talent that makes it so that you do not uh, get the increased difficulty from evasive action? No, uh, mine was to do the second action at the same difficulty. Okay, in that case, to fire phase cannons at medium range is a difficulty four. And torpedoes are also at a difficulty four because evasive right. also makes it so that you shooting is one difficulty higher. Yeah, no, we'll do the phase cannons. Okay. Um, okay. Since it's the same difficulty, I don't want to give you threat, and torpedoes are a little bit aggressive. Mm hmm. I think we need to dump a lot of resources to make this hit, though. Yeah. Yeah, so we're basically capped, so you could buy two extra dice if you needed to. And Yeah, I think that'll work. So that's uh, going to give us six dice total, which is pretty good. Right. But six from what? Well, it'll be... he starts with two. Oh, no, five total. Yeah, yeah. so that should be okay. All right, so... so uh... I'm buying two dice or three dice? Two. Okay, two dice. So that gives me four and then the ship, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So Rollins, you're doing a control security and the ship is going to do a weapon security and then again, the difficulty is a four. Weapon security. Alright, no help from the ship. Oh, okay, that's pretty uh, good. But you do get a momentum back. Alright, go ahead and roll me your damage on your phase cannons. We get two extra dice of damage. So it's seven, we get so two extra, nine? so nine. So nine, yeah. yes. And piercing and, two. And this is the weapons. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> needless to say, you get rid of all the resistance with all those effects. Uh, let's see, what are you spending your versatile one on? Um, hmm. Maybe just like an, uh, an extra damage might be nice, but I'm not sure what else we could spend it on. Well, uh, that's kind of why I uh, I did this so that we could, you know, check and see what uh, what was available. So what you could do uh, is you could spend your versatile uh, as long, or you could spend your versatile and one momentum to cause a devastating attack and oh. that would give you an additional hit dealing half the damage rounding up and then you could also spend one momentum for one power loss uh for them Ooh, i i like the idea of the power loss and you can Ooh. spend as many momentum as you want to reduce their power okay so do we want to use the versatile one on the power and then maybe dump another one or two into it? So if we if we do the additional system, or devastating attack hits a random system is the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I was talking about the power loss rather than doing devastating. Yeah, power loss, just, just the one, right? We don't want to... Can, can someone make sure that Jensen's not sleeping? <laughs> Um, for for Lizzo would definitely be checking on that. Yeah. Every... <laughs> like, hey, you know, after we fired, <laughs> Jensen's not sleeping, and these are just make believe guns. <laughs> uh, I don't think getting more hits gets more more breaches to their weapons here, does it? Uh, no. So, uh, because it is, if you did, well, let's see. So you did five damage, uh, more than five. So that's one breach. Uh, you did not lower their shields, so that is a not a breach. So you only do the one breach at the moment. So if if we got enough more damage to get through their shields, it would be a second breach. Correct, but I'm not going to tell you how much you're missing. Right. We. I mean, there are three zeros there. I don't know if that gets us there. Um, I mean, I don't want to be the guy, but these guys are supposedly friendly. So mm -hmm. let's not kill them. Yes. Yeah, this, so this would this would only go to their weapons if you just increased damage. Yeah, but we've killed people only going for their engines and stuff. I mean, engines explode. So do weapons. So do weapons. Do they? 
<laughs> Do they really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I concur with our commanding officer with the power loss. Yeah, we're doing the power loss. All right. All right. How many momentum are you spending for power loss? Uh, one. Yeah. So we're just going to use our versatile then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, and maybe broadcast. Hey, this could have been worse. Please power down your weapon. All right. We're here to help you. So your cannons uh, disengage from the bottom of the hole and they fire out uh, sort of a whitish blue beam that impacts the shields of the Piok. And uh, it uh, it does... The, the shields hold on the Piok, but uh, they're still standing. You are detecting that you did some minor damage to their weaponry, but uh, on their turn... Uh, they actually are able to bypass uh, the damage you made, and they're going to fire again. And I will spend uh, a couple threats so that they roll a third die. Very nice. Uh, which means they do hit you. We're evasive. Uh, even with evasive, they do hit you, because that's four successes. Uh, right. Let's see. Uh, we do have an additional two resistance, though. Okay. Uh, let's see. So they have three zeros. I will spend a threat to re-roll those three zeros. All right. So that gets their damage up to five. And I will say that because they have disruptor cannons, or no, I did that. That should read disruptor banks. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, uh, so with disruptor banks, that becomes six, seven. Uh, so that's seven damage, and then, uh, how much resistance do you have at the moment? Right now we have five. I will spend two threat more, so this is quite a costly threat spend, to make it so you only have a resistance of one. So oh. you're going to be taking a total of six damage, and that is going to be a breach. So let's uh, let's see where that is. A breach to engines. Ooh. All right. So uh, you guys immediately lose one power. Right. Okay. So we took. So we'd be taking how much to shields? Uh, you would have taken six to shields. Okay. So I think we're at four. Yeah, um, I believe you should be at four. Okay. So actually, you lose two power immediately. So I believe you are now down to all of two power remaining. And until someone does the minor action to restore the engines, uh, anything that involves a power requirement increases in difficulty and complication range. Fun. But it is your guys' turn again. Down to... Okay. Uh, so what is it to uh, restore engines? Is it just a miner? You just tell me you're spending your miner to do it. Uh, and what about for restoring power, though? Like, gain more power? That, is that an action? Yes. If you want to restore power, uh, this is a power management task, and it is either a daring or control engineering at a difficulty of two. All right. Well, as my action, my, as my miner, I'll restore power. Okay. And as my action, I will do... Um, or restore engines, sorry. And then uh, action, I'll roll to get more power. Okay. So again, it's either a daring or control engineering at a difficulty of two. Uh, EPS relays? Yeah. Nah. Nah. Warp core mechanics? Cause I'm Actually, no. EPS power. would apply. What am I thinking? Yes, EPS would apply. <laughs> All right. And... Do, 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 do. All right. You know what? Uh, no. Uh, is it okay if I burn one? Yeah, yeah, I was going to save momentum for a dice. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, Very nice. So you oh, get two yeah. momentum back. Uh, so, uh, you immediately gain one point of power, bringing you up to three, and then you gain an additional point of power per momentum spent. Uh, you guys with two momentum for uh, more power? Yeah, do you have one of those talents that gets you more power for this? Not yet. Ah, okay. Okay. So, uh, you will be back up to five power, I believe. Yep. And yeah, uh, that is going to be your turn. 
And we come back around to the uh, the Peacock, and they are actually going to modulate their shields. Let's see. Yes, they modulate their shields, uh, which means that their resistance does go up. And I'm also going to spend uh, two threat to increase the resistance by an additional two. So that they're getting three additional resistance against the next attack. Well, until they suffer damage anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's back to you guys. I think the only thing you have remaining is your command option. Uh, so I think technically that's the end of the round. Yeah. We can re I don't know. We can reuse a console, right? I mean, you can, but I think all of you as players have gone except the doctor. So if the doctor wants to do something... Yeah, what yeah, check could him. I do exactly? I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, well, uh, you can essentially do anything that would involve a computer. Um, okay. Because you haven't exactly started taking a... Actually, one C. Uh, da, 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 da. There will be minor crew injuries throughout the ship, which medical personnel can deal with quickly patching up the walking wounded and sending them back to their posts. When a ship has suffered one or more breaches, which it has, during a scene, characters in six bay can choose a single department and attempt a daring plus medicine task at a difficulty of two, assisted by the ship's computers and medicine. If successful, the next task, which uses that department, may reroll 1d20. Okay. Interesting. Yes, it's an oft-overlooked uh, thing, but that is how medical people stay relevant during combat. Okay. In that case, yeah, let's give that a go. Um, I'll choose tactical or security, whatever department that would technically be. Yeah, it would be security. All right, so I'll choose security for that. And you said it was daring medicine? Yep. Oh, boy. All of 12, but I do have emergency medicine of, as a focus. Mm -hmm. And I will take a momentum to get a third die. All right. Very nice, you get that momentum right back. Uh, but let's see if the ship gets a complication or if it gives you even more momentum. So that's going to be a uh, computers and medicine, please. Oh, right. Does anyone do <laughs> no, that? I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Computers and medicine. Nope, no assistance right. from the ship. So, uh, you know, you patch up a few people coming in from the security department with uh, some bumps and bruises, and you get them back out and running. So, as I said, uh, the next time a task of any sort involves the security department, uh, you may reroll 1d20. Uh, but that is the end of the round, uh, so we're going to start back up uh, with you guys having four actions, and... The Piak uh, only has three, but the Piak is going to go next. And since this is a fresh round, uh, they can fire once more. Uh, the good news uh -huh. is that uh, they're not really great at it. They, uh, they don't exactly have the best of rolling. So, you know, another blast of disruptor fire streaks past you, but everything's fine. Ah, uh -huh. my maneuvers are evasive. <laughs> um, if you guys are curious, I want to restore shields. Uh, yeah, by all means, I'm cool with it. Everybody else is. Sure. Yeah, Wait, did we just did we lose again? more? Did we lose more power? No, we really? restored it earlier. But we're down one. Yeah, you're down yeah. one. Because we were at two, and then Moose got us back up another three, so we're at five. Mm -hmm. No, okay, I was mixing up our shields and our um other one yeah Never blue bar is shields orange is power i'm sorry uh, what would i roll for shield restoration so shield restoration is a control engineering at a difficulty of one assisted by the ship's structure and engineering all right uh eps warp core 
Yeah. Emergency yeah. repairs. All right, cool. Are you guys okay with momentum for this? Sure. Always. And you said it was structure engineering for the ship? Yep. Okay. All right, well, that's four successes from Moose already. All right, so you guys get uh, three momentum, and yeah, you automatically restore two shield, and you can spend momentum for two more per momentum. Uh, okay, so that's... We go from four to six, and then... You guys want to do one more momentum for just to get us to up to eight? Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, there you go. All right. Moose is just an engineering, still in his, you know, Hawaiian gear. <laughs> yeah, frantically transferring power, restoring shields, basically being the Wunderbar Doctor. <laughs> All right. So, uh, that is a power requirement of one, so you do go down to four power. And uh, the Peacock, the, the Peacock's actually going to try a uh, attack run. Uh, so they are going to be doing that. They're firing again? Uh, no, they're attack running. All right. So they have uh, the next attack they make will reduce in difficulty by one. <laughs> and they do lose some power for this. Doesn't this also make them easier to hit? It does indeed. Uh. And it is your guys' turn again. Well, I mean, they're unresponsive. All right, guys. They're uh, really trying to hurt us? If we want to spend some, a lot of stuff here, we can finish this right now. No, like, I like staying fun. evasive. I don't know that we want to change that. But I can also, get us, I can get yeah. us closer. Yeah, but getting us closer would probably be good. Maybe. I mean, it's both ways, or... I mean, just be aware that the moment Morris takes an, a uh, his turn, the evasive goes away. Oh, is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I can do it again. I can do. I can get us closer and take evasive action. Hmm. Okay. But that cost us two momentum. But and getting us closer. Two and none. Uh, uh evasive. yeah. Well, no. so evasive is one, and It'll... moving anywhere with it medium is no power. So yeah, that'll cost us one power. Oh, okay. But it'll also yeah. generate us a lot of momentum, because it's a difficulty zero task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, we're gonna so do that. I'll, I'll do that. I'll move us into close range, right. uh, and keep the uh, evasive pattern. So... Um, let's do maneuver first. So daring con, uh, control, no, control con, con actually, uh, and the ship will assist you with engines con. Um, I'm going to buy a die. Okay. All right. Take care of that momentum. Or hold on. I don't get assisted by computers or sensors on either. It's fine. Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Well, that's one momentum so far. Someone could get... All right. That's two momentum. And uh, uh, yeah. potential. Hey, more threat. All right. And more momentum. So we're at three. And so then now I'll do... Now I'll do evasive maneuver. Okay. That's a daring con difficulty one. And the ship is doing structure con. All right. And I'll spend one... Uh, momentum here. Okay. Oh, it does cost me two to try this, though. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does cost you two momentum to do this. Alright, so we're down to three. Okay. Alright, there's the one success you need to accomplish the task. I just need to see the ship. He said, uh, what was it for the ship again? Structure con. Alright. Ooh, <laughs> a complication. And uh, more threat. Mm -hmm. uh so let's see the complication what could it be what could it be ah i think i know exactly what i want the complication to be um so you guys do that uh and yeah morris you move into the same uh, evasive pattern as before 
on the Piox turn, however, uh, they are going to attempt to fire at you the second time. No, third time, actually. Um, so attack pattern cancels out your evasive. And it's rolling at a three at the moment, I believe. Yeah, it's rolling at a three at the moment. Um, so I'm going to spend the two threat you just gave me. Uh, actually, let's do three threats, so it's rolling two additional dice. And let's see what happens. No whammy. Well, uh, with <laughs> zeros, yeah, that's a 14, a 15, and a 12, so nothing for it. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, uh, it fires and uh, misses you quite again, because uh, had you stayed at medium range, it probably would have hit you, but because they are banks, not cannons, it is not designed to work at uh, close range, or at least not effectively. Yay! And it's back the to you guys. The force is strong with this one. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can we fire? Yeah. And yeah, you get to reroll a d20 if you want to, because it's a security-related thing. And if we focus on the in uh, the weapons again, it'll still only be difficulty 2, because they did attack pattern. Oh no, it'll go up to 3, because I'm an evasive. Okay. I mean, we have plenty of momentum, so... I was going to say, buy two dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can just do the same thing again. Okay. So, three momentum. Uh, weapons again. The weapons security from the ship, I would assume. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, well, you have the option of rerolling those if you want a crit fish. Uh, I think we're good with what do we have. We, yeah, I mean, do we lose that benefit? Uh, yeah, it does go away. It's it's the next roll, so you would have to spend the reroll on this task if you wanted to in the first place. Um, but with no. that many successes, I believe you get three momentum. Oh, okay. And, yeah, go ahead and roll me your cannon damage. Well, if we were aiming for engines, it'll only be two momentum gains plus the versus Weapons. Weapon. Okay. Right. Okay, so we're at four momentum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and roll. Alrighty, so... Uh, what are you spending your versatile one on? I mean, let's just get rid of the resistance, right? Let's just... Yeah. That's these weapons. I, I don't care if these weapons explode anymore. <laughs> Alright, so you're spending your versatile one uh, to get rid of two resistance. Are you spending any more momentum? How much? Oh, we should have only rolled seven challenge dice. Oh, true. Yeah, we, we, we did scan for weakness on this one. Okay. Oh. I will take off the last two rolls then, and that means that you have uh, six damage at the moment. Okay. So, hmm. how, much, how many two resistance, resistance per moment. momentum? Yeah. So two resistance per momentum. It's two resistance per momentum. What's their scale? I mean, they're comparable in size to you. So but they've hardened their shields. Yep. Um, we could probably, I'd say, almost that we should spend like another two. Yeah. I think okay. so too. Okay. Any maybe one to reroll those zeros, or we just want to leave it at that resistance. I mean, it's only yeah. I I think because rerolling the zeros would pretty much have the same effect as getting rid of two resist. Getting rid of the resistance is much better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's just do the resistance then. So two momentum for a total of removing six resistance. Yep. All right, so go ahead and roll me uh, two system hits, please. Well, one, I guess, because you specifically targeted uh, weapons again. So just roll me one system hit, please. Ooh, I don't know how to do that. Do uh, I... Should be a macro that you should have access to. Um, I no, I don't have access. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait. oh, way down here. It's down at the rollable tables. Uh, no, it should be... Ah, yes. well, duh. There we go. Now you guys should see the macro. Alright, so yeah. Uh, so they lose uh, not only their shields with this attack, but they also lose their weapons. 
so at this point, uh, it is, uh, it's breached pretty well. Uh, and I'm going to say that it's going to spend, well, I'm going to spend, how many momentum is it? It's two per person. So that's, da -da -da -da. I'm going to spend the remaining threat I have that before you guys can do anything, the Piok is going to jump to warp and end the scene. So this is a scene change. Yeah. Okay. But so Piok does jump to warp. And I'll put us back on the bridge. Is it, aren't we allowed to pursue if we have to spend more power than they did? Right, We're and that's the thing, is you have no idea how much power they just spent. And we're not, I mean, we're not pursuing. Petty Officer Staros, was there any problems with the comm? Or, None. Or Chateau in the comm? Who's the... Staros is the comm. Okay, yeah. Is, were there any problems with the comm when we tried to hail them? Negative, as far as I could see, everything was functioning. They just refused to answer. I'll turn around in my chair. Weren't we here to help them fix the engines they just went to work with? Yeah. Yeah, what the hell was that? Uh, well, let's... Can we, um... Can we set up some communication with Vulcan and... Maybe they can shed some light on what just happened? Uh, can I, Jim? Yeah, you certainly can. One moment, sir. Uh, anything I gotta roll, or is it just simple? Nah, you just open a channel. Uh, so, the uh, head researcher, uh, Strock, appears on screen again, and he says, uh, Mr. Rollins, have you found our vessel? We found your vessel. Uh, it looks like the engines were working just fine, as well as the uh, phaser banks. He raises an eyebrow. We do not fit our ships with any weaponry, Mr. Rollins? Yeah. Um, I think we'll maybe have to send you guys a copy of the logs because we're at a loss ourselves. Well, uh, we can confirm that the communication, the distress call was valid. It came from a ship that was known to be operating in that area. I am at a loss, though, as to how it could require or acquire weaponry without anyone knowing. Yep. Hmm. Well, we'll do a little bit of scanning just to see that you don't have a second ship out here that is, in fact, having engine problems, but we'll probably be returning here soon. Very well. However, I would make the case that it may be useful to pursue the vessel. It may hold some of the answers we are seeking. Very well. Ensign Moores. Understood, sir. Um, although I, I currently the best we can manage is warp two. Well, three okay. without take all our power. Don't we? We did a scene change. Don't we get our all our power back and stuff? Yes. So you do get your power back uh, unless you decide to um, use it immediately for warp. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, page down to uh, Moose. Lieutenant Moose. Speaking. Uh, we're going to need some power where we will be pursuing the vessel. Understood. All right, so and, uh, how much power are you spending to pursue? Yeah. All of it? All but one? What do we want, guy? I, I I feel like all but one is a safer bet. Yeah, all but one because they were hostile. 
All right, so just so you know, uh, if this does turn into actual combat, when you drop out of warp, you will only have that one power. Just yep. so you know. Yeah. So that'll put us at warp two. Unless we get the power back first. Well, no, because it is a scene change, you go back up to full, and then you would spend five oh, to catch up. okay. Yeah. Oh! Um, okay, so, so we so are... So we're going to swap five. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Um, so... Uh, you, uh, you give the order for Mr. Morris to follow the ship into warp. And, I mean, as was said earlier, you guys are the fastest ship in the area, and it's actually rather trivial for you to catch up, especially at your speed, with the, uh, the Piak, and, uh, before, uh... Oh, go ahead. Short, sorry, but shortly before we engage, um, mm -hmm. uh... Captain, um, a word, please. Um, I kind of just like mentioned to come over to my console because I am plotting the pursuit route. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll approach. What's up, Ensign? Um, I, I'll, I'll kind of keep my voice down a little bit. I'm not whispering, but um, I do want to point out that this distraction uh, happened shortly before um, Ms. Jensen was set to possibly leave the ship. I don't know. I imagine she's going through some stuff right now, and she has some abilities I don't we don't she understand. Was... She's I don't done nothing. She was set to leave the ship, though. I don't. Does, did she know that? Well, I mean, we haven't discussed anything, but the the Vulcan uh, specialist is here on ship to assist her locally here on ship at the moment. Oh, I understand. Um, very well. Just wanted to share my thoughts, Captain. And she's on... She's still in the medical bay? She was in the medical bay right before we warped out. Yeah, unless she's been discharged, that's where she is. Okay. Because she's got, like, an hour and a half or something like that before she was supposed to meet the... It was like an hour, I believe. Mm. Yeah. So it's, we're probably coming up close on that time. We are indeed. So, right. oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Ship's ready, Captain. All right. So, just kind of broadcast that it looks like we've caught up to the hostile ship. All hands, brace. So, as you uh, as you catch up on the fleeing vessel, uh, I would like to point out that uh, usually shields are not operational at warp. Uh, so, uh, you do have the option of firing upon them. However, because of uh, your the amount of power you spent to catch up to them, if you fire your weapons, uh, you will go down to zero power and thus drop out of warp. Unless you fire torpedoes. Because torpedoes do not have a power requirement. And we're going to have to fire on them to get them to drop out of warp. Maybe. Most likely. I mean, there there are other ways. You could attempt a computer override. You could try another hail. There's many things you could do. Well, let's hail first. Yeah, let's beam in one of the nuclear warheads. <laughs> no, hail. Petty Officer Staros, if you can try to hail again. Very well. Attempted to hail. You try and hail again, and uh, yeah, no response. Um... I would like to try something if we have the time mm -hmm. before we go into combat. Um, just run a quick scan for life signs. Roll me a reason medicine, assisted by the ship's sensors medicine. The difficulty is a one. Okay. We still have one breach on engines, right? Uh, you have one breach to engines, yes. Alright, I'm just gonna mark that on the sheet. Uh, the only applicable focus here I think I have would be either diog ah, diagnosis or xenobiology, but both of those might be a stretch. Yeah, no, they're too much of a stretch. Okay, that's fine. All right, you get two momentum. Let's see if the ship gets you any more. Two momentum is three. What is the ship rolling? A uh, sensor's medicine.
Hey. Hey, so you have hey. to form momentum. Nice. So, uh, Master Chief, you realize something rather important. There are no life signs aboard. Like, none at all, period. I'll kind of flip out my communicator. I'm guessing from sick bay is where I would be. Mm -hmm. uh, Master Chief for Lisa to Lieutenant Rollins. Go ahead. There are no life signs aboard that ship. There's nobody there. Is Jensen still awake? Oh, well, she's still in sick bay with me, I'd assume. So is she? Yeah, you look over and she's just sort of sitting there uh, minding her own business as much as she can. Mm -hmm. uh, she's awake. And would you let her know of our situation in case she's having a daydream? Um, I'd assume at this point I would have, like, well, out of character informed her about what was happening and mm -hmm. asked her that. Yes. Yeah, as far as she knows, she's not doing anything. Just checking. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a fair concern. Are we able to beam during warp? Yeah, you can beam during warp. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can certainly do it. Um, are we sure that's the smartest idea? No. But, I mean, we want information. If we fire on them, we may end up destroying the ship, but we could, if there's no one over there, uh, we could take it over. This Here's isn't an option. We do have a really super-powered AI with us. Go ahead, Moose. If we want this ship stopped in a timely manner, get close enough and we can disrupt its warp field. Drop it out of warp. Yeah, if we could do that without losing our last bit of power, that would probably be the best. I would say this would be your... You would get one attempt at this, and if you fail, uh, you will have to drop out of warp, recuperate your power, and that will give it time to slip even further away. Is that or we can pop the engines? Captain, I'm willing to give it a shot. Okay. I can do, do this. this. Right. Can I do this, Tim? Yes, <laughs> you can. Uh, so this is going to be a... And I'm going to say, so, Morris, if you roll this, this is going to be a daring con... Uh, if Moose is rolling this, this is going to be a daring engineering. Uh, you may assist each other, and the ship will be assisting you with a structure engineering. Uh, the difficulty here, uh, is going to be a five. Oh, boy. So, my daring con's at 14. Uh, 15 for daring engineering. So you want me to assist you? But you I also did say I can do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to. I'm happy to take the lead here. Um, and I am gonna burn a value here. I don't believe in impossible. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my helm operation comes into play. It does. Okay, so I'm gonna spend two momentum to grab a fourth die. All right. Um, so I, I'm not rolling the the two successes I already have. Right. So you're leading? Yeah, I said I said I would. Alright. And I'm assisting with Darren Engineering? Yes, you are. Not that it's he just needs one it. dice? Uh, just the one dice? Yep, just the one. And, and we get the mechanics? Uh, warp core mechanics would apply, yes. And the ship is assisting with structure engineering. We get back a momentum. Two momentum. Come on, ship. All right, so... Yep, to applicable focus, and go. Four uh, momentum! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, you get back... So we're uh, capped? Yeah, you're capped. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Morris, in a uh, masterful display of coordination between yourself and engineering... Uh, you fly up almost hull-touching close to the 
uh, Piak, and you, in conjunction with Moose, uh, begin to destabilize the warp bubble. And the effect is mostly instantaneous, where uh, the moment you destabilize the bubble, they drop out of warp with you basically on top of them. And uh, I will say, if you give me two momentum, you can lock them in a tractor beam, and that will be the end of the scene. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Do that. All right. So, uh, as you drop out of warp, you lock a tractor beam on them, and with a scene change, you go down to three momentum. But yeah, uh, the ship is not firing back at you. Uh, it is more or less playing dead uh, within your tractor beam at the moment. And I think this is where we're going to take our break. So we're going to take uh, 10 minutes here. Uh, be back then.
All right, and welcome back, everyone. So, uh, again, uh, you guys had just been attacked by a Vulcan science vessel that shouldn't have had weapons to begin with. And in pursuit of this vessel, you discovered that there were no life signs aboard and that it was apparently operating autonomously. Uh, at the moment, you have it locked in a tractor beam and it is more or less at your mercy. So, what would you like to do? Let's uh, break apart its parts, attach them to the ship. Now we can have phaser banks and phaser beams. Hmm. <laughs> and this is where we become scavengers. Uh, well, I, I think we should disable the ship. Like, um, I mean, if there's no life signs, I still think beaming aboard with the boarding party might be the best. GM, mm -hmm. the energy pattern of this vessel, do I recognize it at all? I mean, it it reads like a normal Vulcan Science Academy vessel, if that's what you mean. Not like a uh, holographic projecting Romulan drone? Nope. Alright. What's the typical, the standard crew complement for this kind of vessel? I believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 100 to 200, if I remember correctly. Actually, hold on. Uh, the vessel maintains an active crew of 15, and they act as teachers and officers for the vessel in addition to the 30 students aboard. So, yeah, this could be uh, 45 people uh, comfortably. So it's it's got a lot of... Uh, it's got a lot of uh, empty room, per se. A lot of laboratories and cargo bays. It's it's definitely on the smaller of the scale threes. Well, I'd like to do a boarding party. Uh, can we do, uh, like, Moose, Helix... A bunch of security officers. I mean, that's your call. Maybe scientists. Any recommendations from other crew members? Well, my supporting character is our is a Vulcan security officer, but he's also the guy manning the trans the tractor beam right now. Mm -hmm. So those are my two options. They're Hib and Morris. So, uh, Moose, to help this uh, along, uh, by now you've been apprised of the situation, and uh, Helix has taken a look at what the scans have shown, and she kind of goes to you and says, Moose, I believe I may be of assistance here, if you will allow it. I most definitely was thinking of actually including you on any missions that we might be going over. Hmm. Well, I meant more that uh, I could potentially explore what's going on with that vessel. However, I would need access to the ship's communications array and main computer. Is this going to be any different from last time you accessed the main computer? Perhaps. I'm unsure. All right, well, give me a second, and he's going to go over his computer, and he's just going to activate a firewall around the main core. Mm -hmm. uh, still allow her to access things, but everything is, it's a little bit slower. It's basically uh, coordinating off any uh, programs that she will have to go through. Okay. Okay, you're good to go. All right, so she goes over to a computer interface, uh, hooks up, and uh, after a moment on the bridge, uh, Starro sees that a massive amount of data is being transmitted towards uh, the Vulcan science ship Piak. Starro just raises an eyebrow. It marches it. Okay. So after about maybe about a minute, maybe two minutes, uh, there's another massive transfer of data from the Piak back to the Avenger. 
And Helix disconnects and says, Well, uh, would you like the good news or the bad news? I want a mix. Some bad with good, and then it ends with good. Strange, but I will try anyway. The ship and its crew were abducted by a strange alien species. I, I don't... I didn't see any previous knowledge of this species either in their database or yours, so I am unable to provide a name or really anything about this species other than the fact that whoever they were, they abducted the crew, uh, they outfitted this vessel with weapons, as you can see, and then they installed their own AI program to run the thing. I have taken the liberty of stealing away that AI. Uh, it is currently quarantined within my own storage units. I could attempt to analyze it further if you so wished. Uh, the risk of it trying to overtake you? <laughs> no, I've learned from my past mistakes. There will be no risk of that. Well then, since you're under my watch and my orders, I see that there's no threat. Proceed. Hmm. This will take a while. You may wish to inform those on the bridge not to do anything hasty. However, you can at least tell them the good news is that I have, in the process of removing the AI, I have rendered the ship inert. It is, quote-unquote, safe to be returned to whatever place you so wish. Understood. Thank you. And we uh, will actually head up to the bridge. Okay. So back on the bridge, you know, you're talking about, well, if we send, you know, XYZ, what do we do about JKL? And that's when Moose kind of walks in. Got it, Moose. We're just getting ready to send over a boarding party. Oh, very good. We can send a middle one. Uh, Helix was able to get aboard the ship and uh, neutralize any internal threat. Pardon? He looks got aboard the ship via transmission and uh well stop the computer from doing what it was trying to do. And is. You decided to do this without letting us know? Well, yes. That's why I'm up here now is let you know. So the ship is have... disabled. Apparently there's an AI aboard the ship. She's investigating it currently. Okay. Well then, we need to get power back. Um, and I believe we'll be towing this for the moment. Until we can figure out more. She was able to disable, like, all systems. As far as I understand it, she was able to disable the program that was in charge of the ship. So, if we had boarded it, there could have been complications, atmosphere venting, stuff of that nature. Um, apparently, an alien species had abducted the crew. So, there's that. Okay. Moose, uh, you gave me your thought. Does the, does the ship still have communications... Was that an intentional trap that we were led into? More than likely. Mm, he, like, said that the ship was outfitted with weapons. So, we need to believe that whatever ship would come to render assistance would be disabled, and then the other species would come back and claim more prizes. Do we know that? Speculation, but it's a good guess. I'm curious if there are similar reports of um, criminal activity in this area. So I'll, I'll put together a preliminary report to kind of immediately send over to Vulcan and Starfleet. Um, just as, yeah, a precursor that someone may be doing this with uh, multiple races. We're still... So I know before, 
like during Enterprise, Vulcan technology was far ahead of Starfleet's. Well, uh, in some aspects, are are they still? Should we? Would we be worried that if they were able to do this to a Vulcan, they can do this to anyone in our fleet? I would say yes, and remember, you are in 2162 after the uh, right. United Federation of Planets was founded, so technically these are Federation ships, and right. yeah, I mean, if they can do this to Vulcan Science Academy vessel, they could probably do it to you guys as well. So, yeah, I will send that relay over to Starfleet, and and the, specifically the, the chief of the... Um, Ah, oh, the gentleman who contacted us regarding this, um, with more information to follow, just kind of, kind of as an immediate, like, hey, this is what we found out. Hmm. Um, people should be made aware and we. All right. I mean, the reply you get back is that they would like you to tow the vessel back to Vulcan, but otherwise, yeah. you are able to act at your discretion. Okay. So. Uh, comms to helix helix have you gotten any more information i am still parsing through the data uh, whoever wrote this code was actually rather masterful about it it's nothing compared to me but i do want to be sure i don't accidentally trip any quote-unquote uh loophole programs or any backdoors that uh might cause issues. I estimate it will take me at least a week's time to fully understand this program. Your assessment of the the vessel, is it inert now? It is functional, if that's what you mean. Whether or not uh, I would put someone aboard the vessel is, of course, something you biologicals would have to decide for yourself. Okay. And... We can tow them in warp? Yes, out of character, you can tow them at warp. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll... We'll do that. All right. Um, I would... Perhaps... With Moose... I mean, like, I don't want to leave the bridge, but... Mm -hmm. Maybe we could take a look at those phaser banks. See if there's... I mean, obviously... Obviously, since we're giving them to the Vulcans, the Vulcans will get that information, but maybe mm. we take a look at them first. Sure. I'll get a shuttle pod ready before we start going into warp for tow. All right. Okay. So, uh, at this point, uh, I do want to say that that's kind of where the content I have prepared today ends. Um... I can give you info dumps, info dumps off the cuff, but if you guys want a more coherent thing, uh, we will basically pick up next session uh, with you guys having returned to Vulcan, and I will have better info dumps than ones that come off the cuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, I, I think this is a good place to end the session, even though it's a little bit early. Um, so players, I guess stick around for a little bit more, but to anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, uh, thank you so much for watching and we will see these guys next week. Bye-bye.